How many demons does Satan actually have? Well, the number might be surprising. People talk a lot about demons, people having demons, demons being cast out. And so the question is, how many demons does Satan actually have? Well, the Bible doesn't say specifically, doesn't spell it out, but by looking at the scriptures, we can get an understanding. We can glean something from the Bible. In other words, did the devil deceive and bring one third of the angels in heaven with him? We're going to look and see, but we're going to tell you this up front. It's a lot more than what we think. We start in Revelation 9, 1, because I want you to get an understanding of a term that is usually ascribed to angelic beings. In Revelation 9, 1, then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star from heaven which had fallen to the earth, and the key of the bottomless pit was given to him. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because this term star is often used of angelic beings, be they fallen angels or even regular angels, you know, those that have kept their abode versus those that are demons. And so the reason why I bring that up is because we go to the next passage, also in Revelation, starting in Revelation 12, verse 3, then another sign appeared in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads were seven diadems, and his tail swept away a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth, which is the reason why I wanted to bring up this notion, this, this word that's used, star, because it's often used to represent angelic beasts or angelic beings. And his tail swept away a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth, which is, by the way, where we are. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth so that she gave birth, he might devour her child. So from that, we can kind of glean that the one third of the stars should probably refer to as the actual angels that were in heaven that fell. Because it'd be hard to kind of imagine that we speak of actual stars because these are stars that came to the earth. Well, the celestial bodies that we're speaking of have not, this is past tense, have not happened, nor does the Bible say that that will happen. But even more to the point, if we go further in chapter 12 to verse 9, look what it says. And the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who was called the devil, and Satan, who deceives the whole world, he was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. So it seems clear that in chapter 12, he's speaking of these stars that were thrown down were not just Satan, but also the demons with him. But I also want you to focus on something else. We go back to this passage. Notice it says, uh, who was called the devil and Satan. If we go to the Greek, to the right side, notice what it says, kai ha satanas. This definite article, the, is vitally important to notice that we're speaking of the Satan, the accuser, the enemy, the opposer. That's what this is. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because, is it possible that there are more than just one Satan? Well, we have the Satan, but we have many Satans. And why is it even important that I will bring it out this way? Well, because we're told that angels are according to Hebrews 1.14, that they are ministering spirits. Before they left their abode and those that stayed, they are ministering spirits. And so these demonic spirits, just like those that aren't demonic, their job is to serve. Serve who? Well, as far as the angels are concerned, they will serve the Lord. They will serve and work in our lives, but on behalf of the Lord. But what do you think fallen angels do? What do you think demons do? The same thing. They're ministering servants to the devil. Why? To bring about an end that he wants. And so these demons show up in our lives, show up in the lives of other people, doing the very best they can to thwart the purpose of God. So considering what was said in Revelation, one third of all the angels were swept away. One third of what number though? The problem is we have no idea what that number actually is. We don't know if these angels numbered a total of a million, a billion, if there was one angel per person, we have no idea. The Bible doesn't say. However, we know this. They aren't making any more. There are no new angels. There are no angels giving birth in heaven or any demons giving birth. And there are none that are being taken away. But does that mean the number has stayed stagnant? What I want you to consider is a statement that Jesus makes to Peter. He says when Peter once rebuked Jesus, when Jesus tells him about his upcoming death and Peter rebukes him, what does Jesus say to him? He said, but he turned to Peter and said to him, get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me. But notice 
what he does not call him. He's not calling him the Satan because there is no definite article. He's calling him a Satan. You are opposing what I'm trying to do. That's the point. Now, was Peter actually on board with Satan? No, but what he was saying was in direct opposition to what God is trying to accomplish. Peter didn't know this. Peter had actually good, in, good intentions, good thoughts, because this is the Lord, and he would do anything as far as he's concerned to protect him. However, it's kind of funny for Peter to even think so, because he would need protection from the Lord. He needs the Lord to fight for him rather than the other way around. But the point is, Jesus recognized that what you are trying to do is not what I'm trying to do. Notice he says, he says, you are not setting your mind on God's interest, but man's. Well, in other words, what you're trying to do is not in leagues with my plan, with my will. And so he calls him a Satan. Why is that important? Because how many other people who might have bad motives, bad thoughts, might also be serving the rule of Satan? Remember, the Bible calls him the God of this world. And Jesus himself even says to the uh, to the Jews in John 8, 44, says, you are of your father, the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. And his point in saying is that you're doing exactly what he's doing. So you are serving him. You are of your father, the devil. And so Jesus also makes a statement. Or actually, John makes a statement in 1 John 2. He says, children is the last hour. And just as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now, many Antichrists have appeared. Well, what does that tell us? Those that are working for the devil, those that are demonic. There are some that are demonic who have their origin from heaven, who were created as angelic beings who have now fallen. But then we've also got those who were born on this earth who also serve in the role to work on the side of the enemy, who are also demonic. That's why the Bible says that we war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And so even though these principalities might either be invisible, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're in the form of that person or that person. Because though a Christian cannot have a demon, though a Christian cannot be oppressed, possessed, demonized, whatever you want to say, his coworker can be, his neighbor can be, someone in his family can be. And so the enemy will use those other people to come against us. So now what's the number of demons? Have no idea. But whatever the number is, also, we have to factor in how many people are actually literally, literally working on the side, whether they know it or not, whether they're conscious to it or unconscious to it. It doesn't matter. They are still working on behalf of the Satan. They are a Satan. They are little deceivers. They are little oppressors. They are little anti-Christ. So how many people does the Bible say or how many demons does the Bible say have been swept away? One third. What does one third even mean? One third of what? One third of a million? One third of a billion? We don't know. But you also have to factor in the ones that you can see as well as those you cannot see. Ultimately, it doesn't matter how many there are. The only number we need to focus on is one. That one who is with us, the Bible says if he's for us, he's more than the world against us. And that's really the only number that matters. Amen.